Hey guys, welcome to another YouTube video. I've got a wicked video for you today. We're going to be breaking down the new track by Kenny Allstar, French the Kid. It's called Coco. It's out now on all stream platforms. Link in the bio. For the part one, we went through all the drums and we laid out for the vocals. Part two, we're going to be going into how I mixed in French's vocals into SPK's beat and instrumental that we finished mixing today. I hope you enjoy the video. If you do, please give it a like. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe. Um, I'm going to be uploading videos every Wednesday and every Friday from now on and then going live on Twitch every Tuesday and every Thursday 6 p.m. Thanks for watching. Really hope you enjoy it. Peace. Safe. Um, yeah, so yeah, as I was saying, so it's really important to uh, make sure obviously the um, the BPM set um, for later on in the track when we want to do edits, uh, delays, even compression, like most plugins will read the BPM and will react differently depending on how you have the BPM set. So really important thing to start off with. Um, as well, a good indication when you re when you look at the bounce down of these things, if you zoom in um, and there's not, but occasionally there can be like a little bit of spare audio here. And if that's in the stems, uh, that means that it's basically uh, given like a little bit of a delay between where the stems start and the rest of the track starts. So, you know, your BPM might, you might have the right BPM, but it still sounds off check that it's normally uh, a case on fruity loops um or fl studios as it's called now um it's like a millisecond delay something where it renders down just go in find that empty bit of audio cut that out drag the audio to number one and uh problem solved but that happens a lot um and, and it get and it trips a lot of engineers up if you don't know what you're looking for anyway so um we all know what the track sounds like at this point. Well, I do anyway, because I've already mixed it. And we're just going to dive in straight away and start mixing these drums. Um, cool. So I've already organized everything, just like last time, uh, into the sections. Everything's labeled fairly decently. Um, and we're good to go. So let's load up. And we're going to get a little loop going of the drum section. I'm just going to hit play and we're going to start loading this up. So again, all of these uh, drums, especially like within hip hop and urban music, you know, they've already been like really heavily compressed and EQ'd and stuff like that. So it's, it's more about just balancing it for the track itself. Like as you can see, this is really loud. Um, normally I would suggest that the uh, producer pulls that pulls that stuff down before sending it to you but you know in, in this case um, you know we've got to work with what we've got so I'm gonna take out a bit of that low end I don't really need that it's just mudding it up I just want this kick to kind of like purse pierce through the mix and I'm gonna take out a bit of this high end as well but again not too much because I want it again to kind of like resonate on that top end um, we're gonna get a pin on our EQ and we're going to scope across so there's like our main hit around 65 I'm just going to open this up and I'm going to boost that and give that a little bit of a hit I'm also going to give a little boost here as well just to help cut through Not too much though, because it's a bit tonal there, and I don't want the kick to have too much tone in case it's out of key to the um, to the bass. So once we've done that, I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna create a bus, bus four, and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna grab my parallel compressor if I can find it. FF, yeah, there it is. We're gonna go here. I've already made a nice. Um, preset which I like to start off with with my parallel compressor here if you guys can see that and we're gonna we're gonna push up this now and we're gonna send a bit of this kick to our parallel compressor straight away you can hear it attacking it giving it much more punch and just add into the kick I quite like how that's sounding with without with just that little bit more driven and it will definitely help out later on in the song later on in the, the the mix when we're like 
fighting against certain things. Adding the snare. Okay, nice. Now listen to this snare. It sounds a little bit muddy. Yeah, as yeah, as you can see here on the EQ, there's quite a lot of low end on this. I'm gonna trim all of this out. Even this 200. And I'm gonna boost around 4K. Just to give it a little bit more snap. And I'm gonna give it a little bit high end as well. But it was quite a muddy snare, so we've we've taken quite a lot of that out and controlled a lot of it. And then again, we're gonna add our parallel compression, same compressor, saving CPU. Sounding good. Post fader. What have we got here? Empty track, okay, cool. So just saving time. We're just gonna delete that straight away. What's this, empty track again. Anything like that, just get rid of it because it will just confuse you more later on down in the mix, you know, spot it and it's empty just get it get rid of it okay we've got a little percussion line here these are acting these are like shakers and hi-hats all in one i'm gonna take all the low end out we don't need that here that's not what this is doing add a bit of high end shelf giving it a bit of flutter And I'm going to add here, I'm not going to add any parallel compression, but I'm going to come here and I'm going to add a tremolo very subtly. I'm going to make it a bit faster as well. Now that will just give the hi-hats just a little bit of movement in the track, just keeping it a little bit more interesting. Maybe even less. This in, little snare roll. This is an important part of the track, actually. This, this, I remember pushing this right to the front when I was first mixing this song. I really like the sound of it. So we're going to push up here again, 4K. Take out a load of the low end. Take out a bit of the high end here. I don't want to take away from the main snare, but I want it to really like cut through in the moment that it comes, that it hits. If you see what I'm saying? Bit of parallel compression. Push it up a bit. Yeah, nice. Just the quick ring. It's got cuts through. I'm gonna loop this here. This is our next section of the drums. Just a little percussion hit. Just to spice it up a little bit, add a bit of difference. Difference. Said that word. Difference. I like it. And I'm going to add parallel compression to this as well. Okay, drums are sounding good already. Already got a good balance. Everything sounds quality. Yeah. What have we got here? Empty track again. A lot of empty tracks here. Obviously, the producer um, had second thoughts with a lot of his instruments that he was adding in here. Strip back. A lot of people do that. I find that a lot actually like producers when they first start they add so much that doesn't need to be there and like you really start honing in your skills when you're able to kind of like do less and and kind of like figure out exactly what it is that needs to be there and doesn't need to be there. Little triangle. Nothing wrong with that. Just a nice little bit of high end covering all frequency spans you know so he's he's got his he's got his lows with the kick he's got his mids with the snare he's got a nice fluctuation of like high mids to highs with the hi-hats and then we emphasize that even more by moving it around the speakers and then you know he's got his little high little trinkets that float across the track really well produced nice Okay, and that seems like that's all the drums in case, unless I miss some. Um, 
and they're gonna be down here. So we're getting a little bit hot, so we're gonna pull this down. Keeping the volume low, keeping the headroom in, in touch. And we're gonna go down to intros now. Right, we're gonna start adding this 808 in. Now, if you remember a little trick that I normally do, uh, that I did last time, I'm gonna take note of the, the point that I pushed in the kick. So 65.5, I'm gonna remember that for when I pull this up, because if it starts to clash a little bit, I'm gonna wanna take that frequency out of the 808. Okay. So it's not kind of interfering too much. But one, I am going to remove a little bit of the frequency. So we said 65.5. Just gonna cut a bit of that out. And I'm gonna boost a little bit of these mids because it's got that kind of like high resonance that sounds nice with these basses. Gonna cut a load of the highs out. And we're gonna add a compressor. We're gonna go for the pro. Okay, we're gonna add a quite a fast attack, quite a fast release, because I want this bass to punch, because it has that wah, 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 and we want that to really cut through in the mix. Gonna add a little bit of gain. Okay. Yeah, now that's more like it. Yeah, that's sounding good. Now, I, I sometimes use other things, but I think for this track, I decided to use um, a plugin called Sausage Fattener. Now, most people slap this right on the on on the plugin itself and use it to like beef shit up, and it is really good at doing that but it's also very hard to control and it ends up kind of like pushing your mix too far forward. The, what, the way I use it, I use it more as like a saturator. So um, I will make another bus like I've done here, bus five, and kind of treat it like a parallel saturator. So it's not being applied straight to my main bass and affecting the sound of it too much, but just underneath we're gonna get a little bit of that growl and that real force that this plugin's so good at doing. So add a bit of fatness and we're gonna send a bit to it. So you can already hear it working. See that barely 12%, 16% are barely even activated. I'll take it off. Put it back on. To me, it's very it's, it's subtle, but you can hear, really hear like those growls now cutting through the mix, which you want from an 808. Yeah. Right now, this is the main melody, so we're gonna grab this. And we're gonna blend this in now. Really cool melody, like it just works so well. Like everything blends so well in this track. This was a really, really like easy track to mix just because of how everything just slotted in with one another. Okay, so it doesn't really have any low and we're gonna remove it anyway just to make sure and allow the bass to have its own pocket. I'm gonna boost around two hertz. And then I'm gonna do a little cut around 800. Now I've done that knowing, I'm preempting because I already know 
uh, and I feel like I should explain that when I was mixing in his vocals, because this main melody is quite like mid central, um, I was finding it hard to blend his vocal in French's vocal in to the mix, but still have it present. So I cut out around those frequencies, his main frequencies that really get the clarity in certain instruments to position it in a nice way. And we're going to take a bit of the highs out because they're not there. And we can allow those lovely hi-hats to cut through. Right, okay, so we're going to start adding these effects. As I said, there's not much to this track, you know. It's very simple, but that's kind of what pays off and what makes the track great. So, I'm gonna add these in. Get a little tighter loop so we can hear it. So this is the reverse before the gunshot and then the delay around it. So we're gonna cut the low end. Just gonna boost it around to curse, like just give it a little bit more space and a little bit more around the highs. Not really gonna fuck with it too much. Just gonna let it sit there. I'm gonna add the gunshot. Oh, that's the sharpness of it. It's doing similar things, but it's a bit more sharp. You see. Boost again. This one here, I'm going to actually add a little bit of the parallel compression too because I just wanted to cut through that a little bit more. There you go. See that hit? Okay, nice. Right, what's this little bugger here? Nice little vocal sample used all the time in hip hop. Back. We're gonna push again around two hertz. Yeah, right. right with this one, it's kind of panning left and right a little bit, but I'm gonna push it so it initially hits a little bit to the right. And we're just kind of going to start moving things around so that it's not so mono. It's probably another vocal sample here. Yeah. Lower version of the same sample. I'm going to push it the other way now. Again, most of what we're doing here is we're not fucking with the beat too much. We're just kind of tidying up, getting rid of things that don't need to be there. The producer spent a lot of time, you know, fine sculpting these instrumentals. We shouldn't need to do too much as engineers. So another empty track. So what do we do? We keep it tidy. We get rid of it. I think this is another one. Yep, we're going to get rid of it. I can't stress enough when it comes to mixing songs and engineering, being tidy and keeping things clean is so important. Um, this is the tag, so we're going to leave this to the bottom. We don't need the tag just yet. Okay, what have we got here? Right, so again, these are all just like little, little bits and pieces that the producers added. It's all about just making things like heard in the right way, right? We've added a correct by accident. Making sure everything has its own position, you know? Because, you know, a lot of the time you listen to the demo and because they've added so many things and, they, and it's not been mixed very well, you know, you can't actually even hear half of the stuff anymore. So, like, you know, it's, it's so nice as an engineer to be able to, like, 
rediscover it for them and then position it in a track where it can be heard and then they end up falling in love with it all over again. Little intro rise. Okay. Nice, I like that. Again, just EQing. We're not even really adding any compression or anything at this point. We don't need to. You know, I, I'm not going to overdo it just for the sake of it. Like, we don't need to with this track. It's a great sounding track. Right, what do we have here? We've got, this is a very subtle uh, dynamic shooting overdrive. So I think this is like an effect that he's put on the main thing that is bounced as a separate. Yeah, so this is like the ambience that he's added to the main stem. So we're gonna blend this in with it. It's like a distorted reverb almost, just to blend in a bit. Same here. He's got his delay, so he's put he's, he's put his effects as as stems, separate stems. So we're just gonna blend these in. He's not gonna fuck with too much. Their effects at the end of the day, he's already done what he's wanted to do to it. Just take the highs and the lows out, make sure it's nice and tidy, and it's not taken away from anything that we want. Um, what do we have here? Okay, so this is just a little intro. Okay, cool. It's nice to have this one a little bit lower just to like grab you, like gently push you back into it. And then bang, it hits back in. Alright, finally we've got the producer tag here, and obviously very important. Make sure this is nice and heard. I don't quite like how bassy that is, so I'm going to pull this down a little bit. Just around there, it's a little bit too bassy, I'm going to push up a little bit on the highs. SPK. Might even just take a little bit of that bass out. SPK. Yeah, nice. And I'm going to add a little bit of reverb to it, because it sounds a touch dry to my ear. SPK. 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 Yeah, nice. SPK. Right, so now listening back to the instrumental. I don't feel like the main melody is prominent enough or wide enough. So I'm going to have another look at this. I'm going to add a compressor to it. To try and I'm using this to kind of, I'm going to do a really tight compressor because I'm trying to like bring out the notes a little bit more. Obviously bring a little bit of volume to it, a little bit more body, but at the same time in like enhance the the pluckiness of the melody. <laughs> Very tight. Dun, 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 dun. This is what we press. Dun, 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 dun. You know what I'm saying? It's just plucking everything through. Uh, it's a little bit loud, so I'm going to lose the gain of touch. Okay, nice. And now we're going to use uh, the same. Oh, that's really there. Really that. We're going to use the same technique that we used on the clue track to give a little bit of width to this to this song. So I'm going to go to my EQ, and we're going to go to the Pro Q2. Now with this, uh, if you logged in last time, you'd know 
we do mid side we change it to mid side that's very important if you want to bring width to something you can't do it on the regular settings you have to change the channel mode to mid side not uh, all cues eqs have this functionality but a lot do nowadays it's becoming more and more of a like popular thing to to put into the eq um right so i'm going to go here Pull up right in the middle. I'm going to change the sides. I'm going to widen the band. I'm going to pull everything up. Now you can hear that. I can already hear that's a lot wider. If I get rid of it. Whoa. The, uh, the difference is crazy. Obviously, if you're listening to me on a phone or whatever, then you're not really going to hear the, the thing. But if you're listening on headphones, especially, or, or on a good set of speakers, you'll definitely hear the difference there. Without. With. Big boost. But, you know, we're not taking away from any of the drums or any of the bass. Like, they still sound strong as hell. We're not blanketing anything. The frequent, the, the sound has it very much its own frequency pocket, which we've spent the last um, 37 minutes sculpting out. So, you know, that that's kind of like where... This is where all of the, the hard work and the, the uh, you know, keeping everything tidy and keeping everything neat comes into play. So now we kind of basically got our instrument, the, the beat mix. Let's have a listen through. And just take it in, see if there's anything that stands out to us, pokes out too much. If you're in the chat and you've got any questions, fire them in. I'll happily answer them now. The way the snare is cutting through, really driving the song, keeping it energetic. in the chat we're just listening through to the instrumental that we've just finished mixing making sure that everything's sitting nicely and well and then we're going to start going and having a look at these vocals so you can hear the kick is riding on top of the 808 and every time the eight and, and and they work together so that the 808 every time there's a note hit on the 808 the kick also hits so it's just they're just they're they're working together i'm gonna leave leave it here at the instrumental um and then on thursday we'll dive straight into the vocals and re and it'll be a really good video actually because we're gonna have we're gonna have a mixture of auto-tune and uh, regular rap so it's going to be good to to see the blend and how we blend and also you know he's he's a, he's a wicked artist and he's up and coming artist so it's going to be nice to to sh show you know how we mix these really like fresh modern artists um i appreciate everyone that's logged in and and watched the stream it was good um i just posted the video of tuesday's 
live stream on YouTube now. You can see that mixed by Jocelyn on my YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed, please go there and subscribe and watch all our live streams. We're back on Tuesday, sorry, and uh, we'll be finalizing this mix and uh, getting the vocals done and making it sound sweet. Um, yeah, thanks again for watching and uh, see you on Tuesday. Cheers, guys.